Tonight I'm going to give an update on I-25 as well as some possible transportation ballot initiatives coming down the pike. I-25 aligns with our strategic plan through transportation objective 6.1, which is safety for all modes of travel, 6.4, which is improving I-25 to the environmental impact statement, and then finally with 6.5 uh, with improving aging infrastructure. So I wanted to focus on the environmental impact statement because that's important. CDOT put this together in uh, 2011, and the original EIS was to do the bottom or the three plus one. That's three lanes in each direction with a express lane or told in HOV as well. That was an extremely high cost of over $2 billion and would be finished with that funding at the time in 2075. They recognized the need, especially in areas of I-25 near Fort Collins, where it's two lanes in each direction, to phase that approach, which is why they have really phase one is what we call two plus one, and that's two lanes in each direction and an express lane. And then the phase two will be later on. And so I wanted to mention that because the construction that was is going to start next month with I-25 is the two plus one. So this slide focuses on the existing I-25, that it's two lanes in each direction. From 66 to the south, it is currently three lanes in each direction. And so I'll start at the north from Highway 14 down to 402. That's what's known as segments seven and eight. And that's 14 miles of roadway that the project is gonna start next month and be complete in 2021. Out the next slide, I'll talk about more detail of that. This is a $300 million project. Note that in order to build it out to the three plus one or phase two, there's an additional $450 million that's needed for that project. Uh, the, sec the next segment to the south is segment six and that's five miles. That total cost is 250 million. Um, CDOT has committed $200 million in funding, and the North Front Range MPO is going to be submitting a, a build grant, which build grant replaces the Tiger grant from a federal standpoint. This week in Fort Collins is supporting that uh, application to fund segment six. And then finally, segment five is seven miles, and there's a total cost of $425 million to construct um, that section. That is unfunded and regionally we continue to work with others to find funding for that piece. So this is a little bit more blown up about the schedule for the current um, I-25 construction. It's a little confusing because CDOT's nomenclature calls each phase a segment, but it is segments seven and eight, and each of the segments on the screen is the phase of construction. And so they are gonna start in August on widening US 34 in Loveland, and in general, start at the south end of, this, of the overall project and work to the north, where our the prospect and I-25 interchange comes into play with construction will start next summer summer 2019 and be complete at the end of uh, 2020. The overall project will be done by the end of 2021. The next slides, I wanted to go into some upcoming transportation ballot initiatives. Um, I'm going to talk about a previous 2017 Senate bill because the ballot initiatives coming up refer to this, so it's important. And so Senate Bill 17-267, uh, as far as transportation funding goes, allocated $1.8 billion over four years. In 2018, 380 million came through and the subsequent 19, 20, and 21 had 500 million each for $1.5 billion total. 90% of this bill went to the state for highway projects and 10% went to transit. This year in the legislative session, Senate Bill 1801 was passed and that really did two different things. On the left, you'll see two years of general fund transfers. And this year, there was about $500 million that was transferred into transportation from the general fund. And next year, there'll be $150 million. Of that, 70% is going to the state and 30% uh, is being split between counties and cities. This year, that $500 million, Fort Collins will receive an additional $1.3 million in the highway user tax fee revenue. Uh, next year, it'll be $400,000 in additional money. What Senate Bill 1801 does in addition to the general fund transfers is if no citizen-initiated measures are put on the ballot in November of this year, then November of 2019, there'll be a ballot measure that will have $2.3 million in bonds, of which 85% goes to the state and 15% is multimodal. Now, what's also important is that in the previous slide, we saw Senate Bill 17267. This 2019 ballot measure, if it went forward, would actually rescind the last three years or $1.5 billion would go away. That no longer would go into transportation funding. And so the next slide is we're going to talk about some possible 2018 transportation ballot initiatives. The first is ballot initiative 153, which is a 0.62% sales 
sales tax over 20 years. And this would be split up into three different areas. The state would get 45%. That would allow them to bond up to $6 billion for transportation. What's important about this, though, is that that Senate Bill 17267 continues, that revenue continues of that $1.5 billion. So that $6 billion is really $7.5 billion because of the previous Senate bill stays in place. Uh, the locals would get 40% of which would be split between cities and counties. And so in this case, there would be a, approximately $5 million additional revenue from the HUTF uh, per year that comes in from the 0.62% increase. And then lastly, 15% of the 0.62% increase would go to multimodal fund. The second ballot initiative uh, that may move forward is uh, complete bonding repaid by the general fund. And this would go completely to the state for highways and bridges on their system. It would be three and a half billion dollars in bonds. This one would rescind the previous Senate Bill 17-267. So it would really a loss of $1.5 billion. So in summary, I-25 construction is starting this August, it will be wrapped up in 2021. Um, that 0.62% increase, um, CDOT is preparing a tier one list of projects that they're presenting to the Transportation Commission this week. After that, it will be made public and we'll be able to see those. In addition, we are um, working on Fort Collins looking at what projects we would do with that 0.62% increase, which results in the $5 million a year. And the last bullet, if upcoming ballot initiatives pass, there will be more of North I-25 widened. Uh, we talked about segments five and six, because remember, after this construction, we're still going to have 12 miles of two lanes in each direction that needs to be funded. And then lastly, depending on which ballot initiative, we may be receiving $5 million a year. And so that concludes my presentation.